Welcome to A Recipe Reborn, featuring your favorite foods from Final Fantasy XIV. Hello, my name is Lemon Drop, and I develop recipes by combining real-life culinary inspiration with the in-game recipe, description, thumbnail, geography, and lore. If you're into XIV and food, please subscribe and click the bell for a new episode every week. Today, I am making a Grade 2 Artisanal Sky Builders Quiche. If you have been working on your Sky Builders ranking, you probably have come across this expert recipe, which was added in patch 5.21 as part of the Ishgardian restoration. Making something that is quote unquote artisanal may sound like a strange choice considering our current and collective worldwide situation, but I'll explain. You may remember this quiche I posted last year, which was from lesson six of my first culinary course. The instructor informed us that quiche is what they put on the menu to clear out the restaurant fridge and use up the bits and pieces of leftover ingredients. I feel that now is the perfect time for this style of cooking and it's always a good time to reduce food waste. I'd like to look closer at the description which says, in cases such as these, artisanal actually means even the chef can't, doesn't know when into it. Hence the impossibility of replicating the recipe. Sounds like whoever wrote this was having a bad day, but that's not going to stop me. Even more interesting is the description for the wheat, which says, Those in the know claim it is massaged daily and fed beer, which is the reason for the delicious marbled texture. Clearly this is a joke, but it gave me a very good idea, which I will get to shortly. Starting with the crust, I'm combining flour, salt, and butter until it reaches a sandy texture. I'm using a fork, but you could use a pastry cutter, food processor, or try the grating method I used in the tomato pie episode. So here is where the beer comes in. It's fairly common to use wine or spirits in pie crusts instead of water. Since adding water to flour develops gluten, if we replace some of the water with alcohol, this in theory means not as much gluten can form, yielding a flakier, more tender crust. I'm not sure if this is true, but we'll see how it turns out. This rests in the fridge while I prepare the fillings. This could be anything you have laying around, you could make it vegetarian if you prefer. I'm using some slab bacon diced up so I can cook my vegetables in the rendered fat. Leeks have a mild onion flavor without having to cook them down for a long time. The red bell pepper gives a sweet flavor and represents the Dravanian paprika, which grows in the Kurthus Western Highlands just outside of Ishgard. These are shimeji mushrooms, also known as beach mushrooms, which I thought closely resembled the ones in the thumbnail. Of course, any mushroom will work and will taste great sautéed in bacon fat or butter. It's time to roll out the dough, and instead of flouring my board, I'm using a piece of parchment paper that I cut to the size of my pie plate, so I'll know exactly when I've reached the right size. Then I can just flip it right in. Next, I'm using one knuckle and two fingers to crimp the edge. This is completely optional and just looks cute. I'm going to blind bake this crust so this parchment paper is a barrier between my pie weights and the crust. If you don't have pie weights, you can use some dry beans. This goes into the oven to bake about 70% of the way while I prepare the eggs. The culinary school recipe I adapted this from said to use milk and fewer eggs, but instead I chose to use more eggs with cream because that's what I have left over. Just keep in mind you need at least one egg to a half a cup of dairy, so if you have fewer eggs but more milk, you can still make a quiche. Here I have some Gruyere cheese, it brings a nice pungent flavor and it goes on the bottom so the egg mixture doesn't soak through to the crust. The fillings go in first to make sure there's enough room and the egg mixture goes in after so it doesn't accidentally overflow. Top it with the remaining cheese and now it's time to get fancy and bring that artisanal touch. I set aside some of my fillings to decorate the top and make it look extra pretty. It's nice to be able to know what's inside the quiche just by looking at it. I chose to add dill because it brings a nice fresh grassy herb flavor and color. It also represents mist dill which grows in the Kurthus Western Highlands. I made an egg wash with the yolk and some water, but you can use a bit of the egg mixture if you're low on eggs. This is just for color anyway, so it's optional. This goes back into the oven to bake until the center is set, and you'll know it's done if it wiggles only a little in the middle, and if you look at it from the side, it should be slightly domed and puffy. I love quiche, so it's only natural that I think this is delicious. Each ingredient has its own unique voice, and I can definitely taste the beer in the crust. I used a wheat beer, so it isn't standing out clearly on its own, but it does add that tiny bit of je ne sais quoi that you can't quite put your finger on. So if you have some random stuff in your fridge to use up, I hope you give quiche a try. Please stay safe, healthy, and take care of each other. I will be taking next week off to take care of myself in these strange times and to prepare for the first anniversary of A Recipe Reborn in April. For the full recipe and instructions, please check out the link to my website in the description below and in the card at the top of the screen. Thank you for watching and I will see you in April for another recipe and another episode. Until then, please enjoy this video of Kupo working out her feelings on one of her toys. And if you want to stay up to date with me in the meantime, check out my social links on screen and in the description below. 